Woodland Retreat It was getting toward the tail end of summer, and the season had been long, hard, and extremely dry. Everyone across the country had felt it in some way or fashion, none more so than the camp crew, a team brought together from not only the four corners of the country, but from abroad as well. Each had their own personality, drive, goals and ambitions, and they had all come together over the summer, bonding over shared pastimes, loves and hobbies. Now the summer was drawing to a close, and soon they would all be going on their own ways again. Some of the camp staff had already decided to go home, either to a different state or fly back, while those who had chose to stay did so in the knowledge that they would have to find their own way back home. For those that stayed, it was a chance to let their hair down, party and have a good time. They either hired a car and went on a drive from either the west or the east coast, down Route 66. Others went to various theme parks that America had to offer, soaked up the sun on the sandy beaches across the coast, or some decided to spend their time camping on their own terms. For Richard, Emily, Patrick, and Maddie, this had been the case. Richard and Emily were both brother and sister, born and raised in Montana, and had taken the camp job as a way to further their college studies over the summer, whereas both Patrick and Maddie had come from overseas. Like both Richard and Emily, they had both seen a fly in their local colleges, offering some employment at campsites across the United States. Richard was the designated driver of the group, being that he owned the only car, and that he didn't drink. Not that he couldn't, but he just didn't enjoy the taste of beer, lager, or spirits. It had been a surprise to both Patrick and Maddie to find out that the legal age for drinking was, was 21. Both of them had become accustomed to it back home. The four had decided to take a camping trip up into the woodland of Maryland. They all knew the stories and had seen the movie. But that didn't stop them. It was a chance to unwind, relax, and have a good time. Richard had managed to get a late booking on a cabin with a cancellation having come up, and so he had jumped at the chance at first. It was going to be just him and Emily, getting a little bit of extra time away from home before going back. But now both Patrick and Madeline were joining them. He hoped it was going to be a blast. Both Richard and Emily were big game nerds and were ever present at their local board gaming cafe. Richard had brought a selection of games and stowed them in the boot of his car, along with Emily's selection, and they had been delighted to know both Patrick and Maddie enjoyed that pastime as well. They had been on the road a few hours and had stopped along the way at a roadside diner, followed up by picking up supplies before heading off to the lodge. By the time they arrived at the woodland, the lodge, it was already late afternoon, and the sun was starting to dip, ready to begin his voyage, ducking low into the tree line. So by the time they arrived at the lodge, the light was already starting to disappear. Quickly, they grabbed their things from the car and made their way inside. The lodge was a typical wooden built structure, log built, interlocking at the sides with a pointed tipped roof. The windows seemed to be in need of a good clean, yet they knew that general things like that could be done the following day. For now, all the four friends cared about was getting inside out of the dark and getting something to eat. As they all entered into the lodge, the smell of damp wood was the first thing to hit them. The inside was built in a standard fashion. The living room and kitchen area was combined together 
with a large double set windows looking out across the far end, with a settee and a pair of single red worn chairs placed looking out of a view of the woodland. A stone-built fireplace with logs either set into the area or next to it was built into, into the far left wall. The kitchen area was open planned, running across the opposite side of the living room, with the bedrooms both down a small corridor to the right of the lodge. Patrick helped Richard to bring the bags in, while both Emily and Maddie took their own things to the bedroom they would be sharing. Once they had sorted and unpacked what they needed, the time was heading close to seven at night, and so wanting to make the night of it, they prepared dinner, while setting up the board game Betrayal, a rather unique game of working together, until a twist happens and someone becomes the villain of the piece. It had been one of Emily's favorites, and was happy to know that Maddie also enjoyed that as well. The game itself was intense from the start, and with each section of the house that was being built, the tension grew ever more. Early on, Patrick had discovered a tile which sent him down to the basement level and into a wine cellar. Feeling the moment, he reached down the side of the chair he was sat at and produced a can of JD and Coke for everyone. Handing them out gleefully, Maddie and Emily accepted. However, Richard was more reluctant. But with a little coaxing from the group, he accepted, agreeing to try it. As Emily took a sip, it hit her instantly. Yet, the best reaction came from Richard, who seemed to almost choke as the liquid passed through into his system. As the others looked at him, they all had a good cheeky giggle and jab, with Patrick placing a hand on his shoulder, saying a corny Star Wars line of, You've taken your first step into a larger world. While Emily tenderly, momentarily placed her head on his left shoulder before sitting back up again. It was, as, however, as Richard regained his composure, that he thought he saw something move in the darkening woods, only fleetingly, but still movement. Putting it down to the wind rustling the tree line, he bared it no mind, and they continued on with the game. Once the game had reached its second phase, Richard found himself taking on the role of the villain, and had to leave the table to read up on what he needed to do, while the others did so with theirs. As Richard sat in the boy's bedroom, looking at his book, once more he saw a figure in the tree line. This time, he could see it wasn't just branches swaying in the wind. As he focused on the outline, he could see a pair of bloody red eyes, looking intensely back at him before darting off. Quickly leaving the bedroom, he heard both girls scream in unison, with Patrick cursing, placing himself between the large windows and the girls. With tensions running high, Patrick drew the curtains and locked the windows as they all huddled in the center of the living room. Moments later, a rapid banging came against the windowed wall, followed quickly by each cornered wall, along with heavy, quick movements of something outside. Before they could even think of making a dash for the car to get the hell out of the woods, the power was cut to the lodge, plunging them into darkness. Still gripped in terror and fear, once more the rapid banging on each wall happened before coming to a stop outside the front door. As they all listened, they could hear the heavy panting and breathing, followed by snarling. One bang, two, three. On the fourth heavy bang, the wooden door collapsed inside. Standing in the doorway was an eight-foot tall, furried creature with a wolf-like face and humanized body, standing, looking at them with, with its blood-red eyes. The creature opened its maw and lunged at the group, with the screams of the group wailing into the lonely darkness of the woods.